In this episode, hey, hold up, what is that? Is that, no, is it? Let's go. In our last episode, we welcomed in our new turbocharger and wastegate combo and then got right to work mounting them up. Since those beautifully engineered parts will be lovingly tucked under Firebolt's bed, we went the extra mile to make sure everything was mounted securely. After that, we took on a few other jobs and installed a new radiator and electric fan that will keep our Turbo 5.3 nice and cool. We've got stout parts up front, now we need to make sure the rest of the driveline is up to the task. Let's get to work. A couple episodes ago, you saw me load up our junkyard Ford 88 that was removed from a semi-cooperative 2001 Ford Explorer. I originally kicked around the idea to go full DIY on this diff rebuild, but decided to leave it to the pros this time around. So along with the diff, I sent over a few boxes of the good stuff from Summit Racing to give this old rear a new lease on life. First up was this Summit Racing ring and pinion set. These gear sets are CNC cut from 8620 steel for excellent durability, factory lapped for a precise fit, and Rockwell tested for hardness. The price is great too. I went with a stock replacement 373 to 1 ratio as that would work well with our transmission gearing and tire size. Next was this Summit Racing Ring and Pinion Installation Kit. This kit has everything you need including differential bearings, front and rear pinion bearings, crush sleeves, pinion seals, marking compound, a brush, and thread locker. To round out our rebuild, I picked up these Richmond Gear Excel axles, which included seals, bearings, and wheel studs. Okay, I'm jumping ahead here. The rebuild shop got the job done fast, so I yanked it out of the van with my engine hoist and got to work cleaning it up a bit. First up, a little chassis enamel paint. Hey y'all, we're giving this old beast a Tennessee touch-up with my favorite paint from Summit Racing. After that dried, we had a couple jobs to do to finish this rear out. First up was to install backing plates. Now ideally you'd have your rebuild shop do this job while they're in there. I asked the shop to salvage the stock Ford Explorer plates, but they were too damaged. Instead of putting the mechanic on hold with the rebuild, I decided to hunt down and install some new backing plates myself here at the garage. So to replace our mangled stock plates, I picked up these awesome replacements from Curry. I was afraid I was going to have to hunt down another used set or get some universal-ish stuff from the parts store, but these are an exact replacement and include caliper brackets and the parking brake assembly, ready to go. Yes! Okay, to do this job, we start by removing the axles. With the backing plates bolted down, back in go the axles. Speaking of the axles, I want to use my stock Toyota wheels, but the Ford hub is too large. To solve this, I took the axles to a local machine shop and had them turn down the outer hub flange to accommodate the 67.1mm Toyota size. The inner lip will still center on the brake rotor properly, while the outer one will center on the wheels. Okay, let's install them. To finish off our transplanted 8.8 with strength, convenience, and good looks, I chose this differential support cover from Summit. 
This thing is really beefy compared to the stock stamped steel piece, and the adjustable load bolts prevent cap movement and breakage, and ensure proper pinion depth and backlash. You also get fill and drain plugs, which makes future gear oil changes so much easier than pulling the whole cover. Let's install it following the detailed instructions that Summit included. That looks great, let's keep rolling. It'd be crazy to bolt on crusty junkyard brakes after all of this rebuilding, so I picked up this replacement brake kit from PowerStop. It includes a set of disc brake rotors and low dust, noise-free ceramic pads with OEM style replacement calipers. Our first step is to clean the protectant coating off the new rotors. The last step on the brakes are installing these factory replacement hoses. So here's our freshened up 8.8 ready for its new life underneath Project Firebolt. Hey everybody, I'm under here working on the power steering lines. I'm going to do my best to show you what's going on under here. Uh, I may have to end up drawing you a picture or something to show you what I've worked out, but let's check it out. Okay, I'm using both the stock Toyota high and low pressure lines, and they run up basically in the stock location. I just had to bend them a little to get around some of the new stuff, like our new steering setup and the new motor mount. So some creative bending <laughs> got us forward and past all that stuff. For the low pressure line, I'm running it down under the engine mount this way, repurposing all of the stock Toyota stuff. And then I've got that running up, and you see that line there and wiggling? That'll go right up to the reservoir, to the low pressure line, and uh, it's almost like it was made for that. Now the high pressure line is going to be a little different. This fitting is for the Toyota pump. It doesn't work on our LS1 pump. Here's the F-body line that comes down this way. So what I'm going to do is take this to a hydraulic hose shop and join it to that F-body power steering line I showed you that's up top. Hopefully they can do that for me. So here's our new custom power steering line that the local hydraulic shop whipped up for me. They did an awesome job and it bolted right into place. Nice! Next, to keep tabs on our transmission fluid, I got this flexible firewall mounted dipstick from Locar. The included mount wouldn't work with my firewall setup, so let's whip up a bracket. That turned out great, on to the next job. Okay, now it's time to take out this tiny stock Toyota rear end. Let's do it. Yeah. 
This should be a pretty straightforward job, especially since our Tacoma is in good rust-free shape. I've never done this on one of these particular trucks before, but it's pretty universal to any rear-wheel drive car or truck, so let's get to it. Okay, I apologize in advance for those of you who live in the rust belt. I have not touched this bolt, but I did spray it down with blaster a couple times. There we go. That was surprisingly easy to remove. Now let's take a look at our Ford 88 next to the stock Toyota rear. Okay, enough looking, let's bolt it up. Look at that. The 8.8 is in. And even more amazing than that, it sat right down on these spring perches. This is definitely a seeing is believing type situation. I would have never believed that this would sit right down on the stock Toyota spring perches like that. Let's keep rolling. Since the Explorer 8.8 axle has wider axle tubes, I picked up these U-bolts from Summit Racing. Here's a stock Toyota one. They almost kind of fit inside. What we'll have to do to accommodate these wider bolts is probably elongate these holes a little bit. See, they go in here real nice. But these, a little bigger. So we're gonna have to hog those holes out just a little bit. Now that the shock mounts have been modified a bit, let's paint them with the good stuff. Okay, we've got our 8-8 in place. All of our pieces and parts are painted up and looking good. Let's bolt it all together. Our next job is to make a brake line to connect from our Toyota bits to our Ford bits. Toyota end, Ford end. I still have to come up with an e-brake solution. I'm currently researching that one. Okay, we're all torqued down under here. Now I'm gonna throw the wheels on. Now earlier on I had these machined down to fit our Toyota wheels, so let's see how that goes. To mate up our Toyota wheels to the Ford rear, I picked up these lug nuts from Weld Racing. They come with washers, but these from Gorilla were a better match for the stock Toyota wheels. There we go, nice. Drive shafts. 
the unsung hero of millions of vehicles roaming the earth. Without them, cars and trucks would just sit motionless, pointlessly revving their engines in a desperate attempt to move. Since we've changed literally everything when it comes to our Tacoma's drivetrain, we need a strong, custom one built for Project Firebolt. So here's what I got. This is a carbon fiber drive shaft from the Driveline Pros at the Drive Shaft Shop. It features a 3.8 inch diameter carbon fiber body with a Sonics 1350 billet slip yoke in the front to match up to our 4L80E and a 1350 flange yoke in the rear to mate up to our Ford 8A. Oh, and I love their logo. I remember seeing it for the first time back in 2015 when I installed their Driveline bits in my LS3 Miata. Those parts have performed perfectly over the years, so their work speaks for itself. You likely already know about the benefits of carbon fiber. More strength with less weight, and when it comes to drive shafts, carbon fiber construction softens shock to driveline components and tires, improving traction and lessening breakage. Carbon fiber drive shafts are stronger than aluminum, absorb harmonics, producing less noise and are safer because when an aluminum drive shaft fails, it shatters compared to carbon fiber, which shears. Yes, I splurged on this a bit, but for good reason. First, due to the length of our drive shaft, an aluminum version would have had to be a significantly larger diameter, which would cause some headaches installing it into our truck. Second, the benefits of carbon fiber speak for themselves. And third, would you just look at it? I mean, would you just look at it? Thank you to the Driveshaft Shop for the excellent service. Be sure to check them out at www.driveshaftshop.com or visit them on Facebook and tell them I said hi. Okay, let's bolt it up. There we go. Perfect fit. Yes. Okay, there's our new carbon fiber drive shaft. I just have it test fitted in here for now. The only little issue is this cross member bracket here where the stock carrier bearing mounted. I'm just gonna have to lop that off. But I think other than that, we're good. Oh man, there's the clearance next to the gas tank. Plenty of room there. Oh, this is excellent. So we'll lop this one off and then grind all this down smooth, give it a coat of paint, and we'll be good to go. And poof, the brackets are gone. See ya. In our last episode, we built the front half of our exhaust that runs from the engine back to the turbo. Now it's time to finish the job by making the exhaust that runs from the turbine outlet out the back of the truck. Okay, I've got the truck on some wooden blocks to raise it up a little. I wanted the truck to be at ride height when we fabricate this rest of this exhaust because it's going over the axle and stuff like that. So I just wanted a good representation of what it'd be like sitting on the ground. Now let's crawl under there and start mocking this thing up. Okay, now I'm gonna slide under here and do some performance looking. I'll be back in a couple hours. Okay, here's what we're working with. I got the spare back in here so I'll know exactly what kind of space I have to run the pipe through there. So the exhaust is gonna come out of the turbo bend, come around this way, in between the leaf spring and the spare, and then we'll bring it out right under the bumper here. To build the rear section of our exhaust, I'm using three and a half inch diameter mandrel U-bends, a section of three and a half inch straight tubing, and these super nice interlocking V-band clamps, all from Summit Racing. I also have the wideband O2 sensor bung which was included in our Holly Terminator X Max system and finally a little 3 to 3.5 inch transition. It's really tricky to capture this under here for you but I'll do my best. So here's the turbo outlet with the V band on it. I've got my 3 to 3.5 inch transition here. So what I'm going to attempt to do 
get this in there, weld that as tight as possible. So once that's in there, hey, look at that. So my plan is to come up and around and then out the back here. This is gonna take some brain power. All right, here's the progress so far. We got our three to three and a half inch adapter here welded onto our V-band. And I've made a couple of pie cuts. And I think if we go like this with these pie cuts and then attach our larger pipe to that, it'll give us the angle we need and get us away from our drive shaft here. So now I'm gonna tack all this up and see how it looks. All right, there's the front part of our turbo back exhaust. That looks good. Let's keep working our way back. In the interest of time, I'm not showing you every single step here, but all along the way, I'm cutting pipe sections and mocking them up under the truck until I'm happy with them. It's a slow process, but more time spent mocking up will result in a better fitting end result. All right, so the Terminator X manual gives really specific instructions for the O2 sensor mounting. Um, so I think I like this spot right up here. So we'll take this pipe off, take it over to the bench, drill the hole, install the mounting boss, and weld that up. Let's get to it. I like this progress here. Got the over the axle section done. Now I'm gonna throw it on the truck and figure out some sort of hanger back there. Let's do it. After trimming off that excess hanger rod, it was time to mount the muffler. To handle that job, I chose this three and a half inch MagnaFlow five by eight oval stainless steel muffler. I've used MagnaFlows on my last few builds and have really been happy with how they perform and last. Okay, let's weld it up. To get the tight bend I wanted before the muffler's inlet, I had to whip up a few more pie cuts. So here's the result of our work so far. I placed the V-band right before the muffler so I can have the option of swapping in a different muffler setup someday or maybe even bolting in a simple straight pipe. Well, that looks way better. Let's bolt it up. Okay, here's the latest progress on the exhaust. You can see where it comes over the axle. I've welded in a three and a half inch V-band there. And then we did a couple of little pie cuts and then that comes out to our MagnaFlow muffler. Now what I need to do is fab up a hanger of some sort. We've got a hanger up ahead, but as you can see, we've got a little wobble here. That's not gonna work. So let's get that done. So with this exhaust job, it's the little things that are so time consuming, like figuring out where to put a hanger. After a lot of trial and error, what I ended up with was welding a little bolt through this guy, and then that lays on top of the frame at an existing hole. We can bolt it up, and then this hanger will slide through. This connects to the muffler, we can weld that up, and then we've got a good solid exhaust hanger. But that probably took a good hour at least, or more, <laughs> to figure out. So these are the things that take so much time with a build like this. There we go, got our hanger mounted. I like this, now there's no movement here. I can shake the whole truck with that. I'm happy with this muffler location back here. I know it looks close on camera to this spare. The good news is, is I can position this over a little bit. So I'll do that later on, get some more breathing room in there. But overall, I think we're good to go. It's a little shiny for my tastes. They only had this size in the polished stainless. So I don't know, we might have to paint over that. To round out our exhaust system, I picked up this three and a half inch mandrel bent stainless steel pipe from Summit Racing. Dang, this thing is so nice. 
I'm gonna have to be really careful with it. You see, I have it on the blanket here. I don't wanna scratch it or mess it up, but this will give a little bit of flash to the back end of Firebolt there, just a little. Super nice part though. It seems like a crime to cut on this beautiful pipe here, but it must be done. Here we go. Well, that was a painful cut to make. Let's go mock it up on the truck. I sure hope I measured that correctly. Okay, this is it. I like it. Took me a while to get it all finagled, but I like this spot. Pretty understated, a little bit of shine. Let's weld it up. With all that welded up, it's time for me to model it for you. Okay, one more job while we're back here. Let's make a simple little dump pipe for our waste gate. I may tie this back into the exhaust later on. We'll see how it sounds. Thank you for watching and thank you to Summit Racing for making this video series possible. They are the LS Swap experts and offer everything you need to build the car or truck of your dreams. Be sure to visit summitracing.com Grab a catalog or download their handy app for all of your horsepower needs. Also, don't forget to come hang out with me in any of these spots. I'd love to hear from you. In the next episode, we're getting busy on plumbing our fuel, oil, and water. So with that said, thanks again, folks. We'll see you next time.